options maybe the board, the employer, the plan is going to have a little more, uh, excuse the pun, investment in or maybe opinion about, you know, when it comes to investment return, the inflation, the salary increases. I'm not sure if Paul's going to know about salary increases at the employer or at the, when it comes to that. He's going to want a lot of feedback and information uh, from the government on that. But he's going to have a wealth of information when it comes to turnover, mortality, you know, retirement rates, experience studies, and so forth. So you just got to see where it's being driven, because that's probably the first place we as auditors are going to go to ask questions about the certain assumption. You know, Tony, one hook on that salary, it, it turns out because our salary assumption is long-term, long-term, we get all the time. You know, we just signed a three-year contract, and they'll tell you what the raise is going to be the next three years. We tend not to give that much weight at all. We tend to use more long term. So actually, the salary is pr pretty much done the same as the other economic assumptions. Yeah. Yeah. Two to one. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Who's keeping score, though? <laughs> that must be, must be the accountants, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey. So, assumptions again, now we're, we're dealing with OPEP. Under pension, you know, investment return is a pretty large assumption. Investment rate of return that dri is a main driver, what I like to call main driver. You know, mortality, inflation, retirement age. Now you're thinking, well, OPEP's come along. It's probably going to be the same, right? Well, maybe not. Typically not. You know, retirement age is going to be a key driver. Now they have this health care trend rate, you know. There's actually two sessions, I think, this week on some health care cost type information that would be a great session to attend if your government has uh, OPEP plans. Uh, that's going to be something that the auditor is going to be scrutinizing and, and looking at and Paul's going to bring some information about that to the table. You know, plan choice, he mentioned that earlier as well. It might be a wealth or several different plans the retiree can choose from. Well, they've got to determine exactly how many are going to choose a certain amount and so forth and estimate that at that time and use their best guess, so to speak, uh, in their valuation report. And the main one, I think, is going to be a game changer is this participation rate. You know, when it comes to a pension, I doubt any of you are going to raise your hand and say, no, thank you. When you retire, I don't want that pension. You can keep it. Uh, you're going to accept that pension for all your hard work all those years. When it comes to the OPEP side, you might be receiving health benefits when you retire, but here's the catch. The government might charge you a portion of those costs. You might have to actually pay to continue those costs. And you're going to think about, well, this, this amount of money I have to pay to stay on my former employer's plan is actually more than if I just went on my own and got my own health benefits. Or my spouse is receiving retirement benefits and it covers me, so I don't really need my former employer's health benefits. So. We have to, not we, Paul and the employer and the auditor have to work together to determine, you know, what's an appropriate participation rate. And if only half the retirees are going to accept OPEB, we can't assume and project a liability for 100% of the employees. That, I think, is going to be something not really, you know, it's was seen in the pension side because everybody wanted that pension. So what are we doing as an auditor? We're, we're trying to obtain the reasonableness and consistency of assumptions. Does that mean all the assumptions should be the same every year? We hope not, because they're going to change, of course. Market conditions, demographic conditions, maybe plan provisions change. So we have to determine how that impacts the assumptions that are used. So sometimes consistency is good, sometimes it's not. It's something we have to make sure we're looking on an annual basis. And that's something you can do throughout the year as things change with the plan, involve the actuary in order to get together so they're not reviewing this at the 11th hour to realize how some of these assumptions change impact the numbers. Perfect timing, I would love to skip through census data testing because it's <laughs> a big area. So I've included some, uh, uh, some bullet points from the audit guide. I can spend days on census data testing because there's no clear cut approach. Just the key point is it's gonna vary depending on the risks that the auditor finds uh, as part of their testing. So. There's great information in Chapter 13 and 14 of the AICPA Audit Guide when it comes to census data testing. Just know that the auditor is going to be testing it. So the quick answer is going to be yes. We really do have to test it in some manner. I've got to take 12 seconds. We, so, had a, we had a situation where there was a component of pay that was not reported to us. We checked data for reasonableness, but there's a component of salary that is pensionable under your statute, and it's never been reported to us. We'll never catch it. And it got caught, and it was a big deal. And this is not a point. This is not scoring a point. We had to say, we had to say that should have been caught in the audit. So if anybody's going to catch uh, something missing between the definition of pay and the payroll records, the actuary will not catch it. That has to be on the audit. Exactly. Is that a point? No, 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 no. Because no, no, no. I agree with that. Yeah, so yeah, we agree. See, there you go. Point for both of us. Yeah, okay. Uh, point for both. Again, some differences between pension and OPED. I really just want to point out the differences that are going to come about with OPED. 
you know, salary-based versus claims-based. The plan well documented. Pensions could be around for years, decades. They never change. Maybe they're driven by the state statute. OPEB could be very, it's going to vary by every employer. The employee, or the employer may not even have documentation supporting it. There might be a small resolution from 1971 that was passed by the board that says so many people are going to receive some sort of benefit. So that's something you have to dig out now before the auditors and the actuaries come looking for that information. So that's going to be a little bit different than what we've seen on their pensions. And often the, and the OPEB is not funded, so you're not going to have that nice big trust balance to offset against the liability. So that's just something, a couple key differences there. <coughs> so now we've received the valuation report. We've talked to the employer. You know, what are we trying to do as the auditor? We're trying to understand everything, of course. We're going to focus on the main assumptions. I used key driver. Don't audit something that doesn't impact the information that's in the financial statements. Don't test salary if, if the OPEB doesn't depend on salary information and so forth. Test the key census data. And if you're going to take one thing away from my part of the presentation, is sure the accounting and reporting is similar between 67 and 68 and 74 and 75. Please don't assume the auditing will be. The focus is going to be different. They're going to be auditing, maybe asking different things than your pension auditors did. Uh, David Bean, my Gatsby hero, is here later this week. He's going to present the accounting and reporting uh, side of Gatsby 75. It'll be a great session if you want to learn more about that. But you'll notice a lot of that is going to be similar. But just remember from the, for the auditors in the room and the employers and the government employees, there's going to be some different questions being asked this time around. When it comes to a specialist, you know, depending on the risks involved, the size of the plan and so forth, we might bring in our specialist a couple bullet points that we're going to bring in maybe someone in-house or hire an actuary to look at Paul's numbers, kind of ask some questions, use their expertise as an actuary, and just make sure what Paul's doing is reasonable and we can utilize as evidence because we're not actuaries when it comes to the auditors most of the time. So we have issues. What do we do? Well, let's hope we're not bringing those issues up during field work all the time. If we can study that valuation report throughout the year, get it, you know, following through the dates, if the valuation's from a year ago, what's stopping us from reviewing the valuation report a lot earlier than year end and asking questions then, getting around the table when everybody's happy and not stressed out, rather than during field work when everybody's pulling their hair out trying to get the audit done. Focus your testing on what matters. You know, don't test something that's not going to drive the numbers. Make sure you're getting accurate census data. Look, what's look at what's important. Compare it. Involve auditors throughout the year. Involve actuaries throughout the year. Let's be friends. Let's all share our shoes. Does anyone have any One minute for questions. <laughs> one or two minutes. Here's one. Uh, what you yeah, the question is, what if your only liability for OPEB is the implicit subsidy? That you need to have a separate conversation. That gets into uh, into a, 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 a actual standard practice number six which says you have to measure it and you have to – so I, th I think the short version is you're going to have an expense. Mm -hmm. um, but that's um, – maybe totally maybe you got more expertise on that. that I, all I know is that's a tough one, but you don't, you're not going to like the answer. You're not exempt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. You're not going to out from under it. That, I, that we can tell you. I know. Sorry. Okay. Anyway, thank you all. Thank you, everyone.